Hey guys, guess what's behind me? A caboose. <laughs> I'm sitting on the stairs of a caboose. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to tell you a couple of interesting things that happened. You know, I've told you some of the miraculous events that have happened regarding my mom. And uh, two things happened recently that made me just feel like she was getting closer to me. And it was truly astounding that I had this really profound dream where I felt like I was alive in the dream. It was so vivid that I felt like I was there is what I'm trying to say. I felt like I was with my mom's mom, my grandmother, and I felt like I was with my mom. Both have passed away and it was pretty incredible because in the dream, I could see my grandmother and my mother sitting at my grandmother's dining room table. And I could see the curve of the table and there is like uh, several inches of wood that hung down from the top of the table. I could see that going around. It was so real that I was with them and also my former percussion teacher that I had for years that um, turned out not to be such a nice person. <laughs> she was in the dream telling me something, giving me a message. And I really felt like this dream was telling me that I would be seeing them soon. So it was really like one of those dreams when you wake up, you don't want to wake up because it, you are so much there in the dream. It's so alive that you want to stay in that dreamlike state that you're dreaming about it. And on the table, my grandmother loved the color purple. On the table, there was a beautiful glass purple tumbler and etched on the glass were kind of like the what you, when you see an ocean scene and you see the seagull shape they were like seagulls but they were silver glitter and this is what kind of was the focal point of the dream i was looking at the purple glass and i was looking at the silver glitter with the birds flying on it and um Gosh, I did not want to wake up. I tried to go back to sleep. It was so vivid in my mind. I could have easily continued. I felt like I was going to continue the dream if I fell back asleep. And so I didn't wind up doing that. I wound up waking up and just thinking about the whole thing. And what really came to me about this short dream was the purple tumbler to me was like... Um, you know, it was like a fine purple glass. It was like the king's table and the king's purple glassware and the glitter birds that were silver reminded me of, in a twinkling of an eye, we would be free and fly away as birds. So I just, when I woke up and I got dressed, I was just in sort of this continuous dream state of this really vivid dream where I felt like I was with them. They were so close to me. And I seriously don't think I've dreamt about my grandmother since after she passed away in 1993. And I had several really miraculous things happen with her passing where God gave me signs that she was okay. So the next thing that happened on the same day that I woke up from that dream, I went up to the lobby to get some breakfast and I was just gonna come back. I had my hands full and so I 
had my phone, and you know how you have the icons just on the main page of your phone? I had not been looking at any photographs or anything like that. It was just on the icon page. So I put my phone in my pocket to carry my stuff back to the room, and I was standing in the kitchen area, setting everything on the counter, and all of a sudden I heard this very faint music box-like music. And my mom had this Christmas CD, or, or it was a cassette tape at the time, of music box music that she would play on Christmas morning, and then that would alert us that, you know, there was presents. <laughs> and I just hear this really faint music box music coming from somewhere, and I, I was like, am I hearing a music box music? And finally figured out that it was my phone in my pocket that was playing something. So I pulled out my phone, and once again, just like before, my phone had sent me pictures and video clips of my mother. Where she, uh, when I pulled my phone out of my pocket, it was playing the video of my mother's pictures. And this happened once before. I told you when I was in Texas, and I asked God if she saw what I was doing you know, down there. And I got this answer when my phone went off with her picture looking up at me. So it was the same thing. And I just knew in my heart that it wasn't just happenstance, that it was, it was really a sign that I was going to be seeing her soon. I pray to God <laughs> that that is true. Um, Two things happened right in a row. The dream of my mom and then having my phone playing a video of her with just pictures of her and myself. And the thing is that you have to know um, is that I didn't have a cell phone when mom was here. We just had like emergency flip phones and they didn't have internet or anything like that. So after she died, I got one of these iPhones and traded in the other phones a few years back. And every picture I've taken of my mom or clip was something that already existed that I had to re-photograph from photos. So anything, any picture that's of my mom in my phone is like a copy of, of the real picture. So for my phone to pick out, out of every picture I've taken since she's been gone, to pick out her pictures and present me with a video of her on, uh, that was about the third occasion that that's happened. And I really felt like the message has to do with, I will be seeing them soon. So, Numerous things have happened, you know, a lot of different signs that I know are from the Lord because this is the way the Holy Spirit brings comfort when you've lost someone who's died. Um, I had a dream about my grandmother after she passed away. This is not the one that died in 2021. That was my father's mother. But after my mom's mom passed away, I, her stuff was in an office and the back of the desk was facing towards the door where I walked in. I kind of came around, I just was thinking about her real heavily and I came around the corner. I just pulled open the second drawer of her desk. I had never looked in her desk or anything before because it was her personal desk, you know, I didn't touch it. And it was kind of being stored out there. And I was just thinking about her, so I just opened up a drawer. And I pulled out one thing. It was my mom's high school graduation um, invitation. The next thing I pulled out of, and she saved like tons and tons of papers, letters, everything. Because that's what people did after World War II. They were really big on saving papers. <laughs> And she, she liked to save stories and all that. So I pull out this letter, and it was addressed to me. 
and it had been written in about 1972 and she still had it in her desk drawer and this was like you know maybe 1995 that I found it somewhere around there and it was a letter to me and my siblings saying that we can handle such a big thing as the loss, the death of someone, and we just have to picture them going on the way they were. I mean, she went on and on about how we have to remember, you know, the good qualities about them and remember that they are still carrying on in those good qualities. And she listed all of the qualities and, you know, good sportsmanship and, you know, <laughs> just, being godly and all of these things. So for me to find a letter addressed to me that was written in 1972, that was typed on her typewriter, and it did not have her handwritten signature at the bottom. It was, you know, it had a thing of, you know, love affectionately, and then where she signed her name, there was no signature. I was blown away by that. And then another time I had my garden seeds in the basement and I was flipping through my garden seeds looking if there was something I could plant that spring. And I saw this package of forget-me-not flowers and I thought, I didn't remember ever getting or purchasing forget-me-nots. I mean, I've never, I had never planted them up to then. And I turned the package of seeds over and it was my grandmother's handwriting and it said i love you dearly kimberly and the flowers were forget me not so of course i had to take some of those seeds to remember them down in texas <laughs> and plant them there where they did sprout while i was there um, it was truly amazing and this letter was about the loss of someone and how we can get through these things and to remember them always going on the way they were smiling and happy and joyful and that their life goes on in the heavenly kingdom so just these two things that happened regarding seeing my mom and my mom's mom in my dream and then having mom show up in my pocket with the music that they chose for the video was like a music box music so that was odd well I hope that this means that we're close to seeing the Lord in the rapture that the dead will be raised out of their graves because I find this very exciting. And, um, you know, it would really bless me if this would happen. Anyway, please be praying about my situation. I pray, too, that God would open a certain door, maybe with my music this time. We'll see. But keep me in your prayers, and um, here's the caboose. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> Got a little bit of the caboose in the picture. I'm kind of sitting here right here is the railings. I don't know if you can see them right here. <laughs> anyway, um, still looking up, still waiting for the Lord to come, and... We know that it can't be too much longer, you know, especially as close as the Jews say that they're going to do their red heifer sacrifice. You know, the war events could accelerate that or they could delay it. I'm thinking that they'll try to accelerate it in any way they can and perhaps use the events that are happening to make it come to pass. But we're waiting for our King, King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Yeshua, Jesus. And um, pretty soon we'll see our King. I pray that you're blessed. 
maybe I can go, I'm sorry about that, maybe I can film a little bit of this caboose here. If I don't fall. <laughs> Hang on a second. Ugh. Here's the inside of the caboose. <laughs> Looks like they're using it for storage. <laughs> well, I'll see you later. Um, I don't want to be in the caboose. I want to be in the first car when the Lord comes. <laughs> There's a gorgeous tree over here. Let me show you. Beautiful. Beautiful pines. So, with that, I'll just say, I hope you have a good evening. I hope you enjoyed hearing this. And please don't forget to hit the like button. It gets the algorithms going so there's more viewership. And if you want to donate to support this channel, it's paypal.me forward slash K-K-R-O-C-O-C-O. -C -O -C -O. That's K-K Rococo. Well, from the end of the train, good night. Woohoo!